shooters, loaders, and casters, welcome to JH586. I'm Jamie. Today we want to take a look at the American Tactical Imports Road Agent Coach Gun. We'll get a good look at it. We'll do a couple of flybys as you can see there. We got some nice engraving and uh, this gun's come a long way. Uh, it was practically brand new, but it was left in a left in a car for about a year and eight months. And you see, it's got the double hammers and the double triggers. Nice old school coach gun, it's a road agent. And this is a 12 gauge, three inch chambers. I wanted to make this video and teach all of you guys who are interested everything I know about it. Shouldn't take too long, but uh, this is gonna be one uh, a more in depth video. Um, the barrels were rusted and uh, I knocked off of the, knocked off the surface rust as best I could. But uh, the barrels went home with Mr. Reloading from the hot pot. Y'all know he's been having some channel difficulties lately, so we want to go over there and check him out, resubscribe to his new channel. First, let's just dig into this and see how far we get till I have to go round up some more tools. You're going to need exact, sit, exact fit screwdrivers. So use the screwdrivers that you have that's going to fill out that screw slot, not just side to side, but lengthwise. You want as much of that, uh, you want as much of that slot full as you can possibly get. So um, basically, it starts like any other shotgun, except for this one. Uh, if you can see, to get the foregrip off, you got a little spring-loaded tensioner right there. Push that down, pull it out, and then your forearm comes off like that. And then you just uh, break open the barrels, and this will just come sliding off of there. And you can rock it up and out. Next, we're going to need to get our uh, stock off. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver. Um, and it doesn't have to be this long, but it needs to be uh, probably a number one Phillips tip. And you want to you see you got the tight little holes right there. So you got to force the screwdriver through those holes and take your, take your recoil pad off. Uh, you can download the user manual for this and they do have a parts diagram in there which will aid you tremendously in uh, how you go about putting this thing, getting it apart, putting it back together. That was all I had to go on. Okay, uh, to get the stock off of your receiver, you're going to need a long extension and you're going to need... Uh, probably a ratchet uh, and a 10 millimeter socket. So just put those tools together. I've got one of these little small craftsmen. So put this together. You've got uh, your big center hole here. And you want to slip this in there and find your Find your rent, find your bolt, and then just unscrew it. I right, hear that. Should be loose now. And there's your bolt. It's a long, skinny bolt. It's got a 10 millimeter. Then your receiver just separates off of your off of your stop 
really and truly to replace your firing pins you i don't think you need to even get it this far if you look here you can cock your hammer back and uh, you see this mechanism right here if i can get it to where you can see it there you go you can see that you've got the this is the back of the firing pin right here you've got slots here on both sides anyway you could take a spanner wrench right there and loosen this replace your firing pin and springs if you take a good look at this receiver you can see this pin right here do not drive that pin out of this receiver don't ask me how I know if you want to take your trigger group your fire control group whatever you want to call it out of your receiver you use this top pin up here let me close this so this one don't mess with take this pin out this is more of a better punch and you'll need a block and something to i just use a an ar block now let me drive this pin out and uh, I like to put something down to keep my keep my work from being marred. It does have some nice scroll work on it, and I would like to preserve that as best I can. So I'm gonna set this down. I'm gonna take this pin and my little brass hammer. I'm gonna drive that pin out just to show y'all it can be done. There's the pin. I'm going to take this from the back of your trigger group. Pull down on that. And it'll wedge out the back. And there's your hammers and your triggers and your hammer springs. Now, I'm going to give you a warning. These springs right here they're fairly easy to get out, but you're going to pay the devil getting them suckers back in. But if you're one of those guys who accidentally drove this pin out instead, <laughs> you're going to need to get those back in. So I went to Wally World and bought a cheap set of channel lock pliers, and I made these. See the, you can see the grips those slots they fit uh, around the pin but grab hold of the spring and you can see I've got those on both sides there and uh, these are just grinder and a Dremel tool you can make these in 15 minutes and you keep working it till you get it right but uh, you can see you can just reach in there grab what you got get it in and out fairly easy but uh Unless you got some serious issues, there's no need to go any further than this. At this point, if you got grunge in there, just uh, get you some kind of a spray lubricant and a can of air, clean it, blow it out. This is your safety and decock mechanism right here. There's, if you see that screw, can you see that screw right there? Yes. All right, that's inside that screw there is a there's a spring and it detents this lever right here there's also a little um, detent ball or a, a, what it looks like is a really small detent pin out of an AR you know the ones the pivot ones and uh, be careful or you will lose that what else do you need to know <laughs> This hole right here on the back of your receiver, this hole. There is a Allen screw in there. And what that does is you use it to increase or decrease the tension on your uh, takedown lever right here. Um, this, this pin right here holds uh, 
an automatic cocking assembly and it is this assembly right here that I have taken out of mine uh, and the pin actually goes through here when you let the barrels down and pull them back up when actually when you you have to press it down and what it's doing is cocking your hammers back so that once you load the barrels and close it it's ready to fire and uh, I may or may not put that back in my yours will come equipped with that and if you want to take it out all you got to do is drive this pin right here out and uh, slide it down from the bottom and out of the gun so it'll it uh, automatically cocks and maybe I can get a comment from six shooter Texan or some guys like that for a cowboy action shooting which you prefer <sighs> These pieces right here are what actually cocks your hammers when you lower your barrels. So I decided to put mine on just for this video. I may or may not go back and take it out, but what you need to remember when putting it back together, the rod is right here. See the rod coming? See it moving in and out? Okay, it's got to go under this piece and toward the front of the receiver much nicer now much nicer i think i'm gonna like that more better or more gooder for mario all right so this pin right here that pin right there yo there you go that pin will release your take down lever your then uh, this pin right here has your you can take your cocking mechanism off or out or you know I don't know it you can take it out and your barrels will fall down they'll, they'll just you can slick it up where they'll just fall or you can leave it on there then you have to push it down but you're also cocking your hammers and uh, you'll have to decide okay now to get all of this back together what I would recommend is you take and uh, before you put this back together take a minute and you, you can tell these are aluminum surfaces just get you a fine coat of oil on there just a just a film not a coat but a film you just don't want it seizing up so a little bit of a little bit of oil goes a long way y'all heard me say for years I use mineral oil nothing more nothing less uh, all right now you want to take these this tab right here on your fire control group that tab goes in this slot right here let's see if we can mate them up so we'll want to stick that under there first like that and then we just want to rock it closed and then the only resistance you should have putting this the rest of the way is this surface right here going inside this surface here where You've got to line that up, those holes up to put that pin in there. Here we go. So we got our hammers all the way back. We want to slip this tab right here into this slot, if you can see it. We want to go right up in there. All right. So we'll go. Just like that slides right in there then we'll put our pin back in here that hole right there and we'll just tap that home with our brass hammer and when you get close get your little punch and Push it the rest of the way in there. 
try not to mar up your finish. There you go. Receivers back together. Take our stop, which we've set aside over here, and we're going to mate that back together. Just like that. Here's our screw. And you're going to have to wiggle it around until you get it in the hole. There it went. Now our long extension. Let's take the ratchet off. We'll just see if we can get that on there. So you're working blind here. It goes back together pretty easy. But it is a long screw. So we'll get that tight. And I like to just go kind of like a spark plug. Finger tight and then a quarter turn. That's good and tight. So now let's uh, go ahead and put our butt pad back on. And uh, one thing I noticed when I was taking this apart for you guys before, the larger the diameter of your screwdriver, the more pain and grief you're going to have. So I went and found one with a smaller shaft. And uh, I think that's going to work much better putting it back together. And we want to make sure we get that in there straight. We don't want to wallow our wood out. So, before you get the first one all the way in there, go ahead and get the second one started. Uh, keep you from scratching your wood up. This goes together more better. All right, that's on there, and that's good and tight. No, I'm not speaking German. So it's pretty easy from here. You just uh, slide that on there. Uh, let's wipe our fingerprints off the underside. I know this is uh, these barrels are seracoded by Gene, but I still like to put a little bit of oil on there, Gene. If I'm not supposed to put oil on there, let me know. Is that little pin sticking out right there? Snap it and then push that in and closed and. You're back together. Let's try that again. That's pretty stiff. I think I like it better the other way. Even with that in place, if you already got your hammers cocked, it's pretty slick. So, what you feel there when you you're actually overcoming the springs of the hammer. Anyway, guys, there's your American Tactical Imports Road Agent. Sorry this video is so long, but I wanted to cover a lot of ground. Uh, thanks to Gene for Saracoding the barrels. Uh, this belonged to my friend Frog, who passed away October of 2020. So, uh, I think I got it back in good shape. There's a good close look at it. There's our tools we used. Good looking little shotgun. I hope you learned something. I hope it uh, comes in useful to somebody. Uh, check us out Friday nights at 8 o'clock on Georgia Shooting Connection channel. Thanks again to Gene for Saracoding the barrels. I think it made a world of difference in this old shotgun. Check us out Friday nights, 8 o'clock, Georgia Shooting Connection channel. We hope the Lord blesses you all real good. Catch you next time. Thank you. Bye.